Hi, Stephanie. Welcome to 11 Questions. Thank you for having me. So excited to be here. Are you a tea person or a coffee person? Definitely a coffee person. I just had a cup uh, <laughs> right before we hopped on the phone. I like tea as well, but coffee will always be my number one love. And what's your favorite thing to eat? I love salad. The reason why is because I like to put so much stuff on it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always been my favorite meal. Basically, almost every single night, that's what I'll have for dinner with like some protein and roasted vegetables and nuts and cheese and just whatever, whatever I feel like giant bowls of salad is what makes me the happiest. What's a happy Sunday for you? On Sundays, I usually write my newsletter or finish my newsletter. I try to write it earlier in the week. So usually my happiest Sunday involves um, waking up and doing some sort of workout or a walk, um, just like moving my body first thing. And then I like to make pancakes on Sundays. Um, in the morning. So I try to make banana pancakes and I'll drink that with my giant cup of coffee. And then usually what I'll do is I'll finish up writing my newsletter. I'll send that out. And then I like to plan out my week and, and what I hope to, um, to work on that week and not just from like a work perspective, but also from a life and personal development and self-care perspective. And doing that just helps me to feel a sense of clarity on what matters to me and how I'm working towards it. And also since I don't have a normal job where I work Monday to Friday, it helps me to build in some boundaries and some structure for myself. And so usually I just try and take it easy, do a little bit of planning. And then I love to read. And so anytime I can curl up with a book at night is always something that makes me happy. How would you define happiness? I would define happiness as using your gifts to help the world, which is the premise of the company I founded. To me, that has been the greatest path towards my own happiness that I've discovered, having tried a whole lot of them and also reviewed a lot of research and talked to a lot of people. So that's my personal definition. And what inspired you to start the new happy i was inspired to start it because i felt as though i saw a lot of people who were unhappy and didn't know why they felt like they had done all of the right things the things that were supposed to make them happy and it wasn't leading to the results or the experience that they had hoped for i realized that because i went through that experience myself I wanted to identify how to support those people. And I discovered that the best way to, to address that is to actually help other people. And so my hope began to kind of burn, I guess, that in helping people to find these opportunities to be of service to others, not only will they find their own happiness, but they'll also make the world a better place. And so that has become our mission. I absolutely love all the graphics that you put out on Instagram. Thank I am you. a fan of the color scheme. So oh. I have to ask, like, do you create them? Did you come up with that? Or do you have a team of people who work with you? Thank you. That's so kind of you. That means so much to me. Um, I do create all of them myself. I have been teaching myself graphic design over the last year and then learning by doing and just trying stuff. I did come up with the color palette myself. When I first started The New Happy, I hired um, a great team of brand designers who got me started on a few of the color palettes. And then I've just evolved them over time to fit as the brand has changed and evolved. Is there something that you find really challenging in this project? So many things. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm challenged by right now is how to continue expanding our brand and platform while also maintaining what we're already doing. It's really tempting to want to do like a hundred different things and go in all sorts of different directions. But I have learned over the last year that staying focused is really powerful if you can focus on just one thing and really learn how to get that right and feel like it's humming and working then you can turn your attention to something else i'm easily excited by new projects and by things that are exciting and new and all that kind of stuff and so it's tempting for me to want to go off and explore other directions and new things right now my challenge is really staying focused on what I'm doing and not not running off to try and keep growing too quickly more staying true to what matters and, and what's working and do you work full-time on new happy or do you yeah. have something else oh yeah I do that's amazing I'm also a full-time caregiver my partner is very ill and so, I mean a f I have a full-time job of being his caregiver and so I I am very fortunate that I can 
fit in my new happy work around taking care of him and those requirements as well. I do think of that as like almost like another job. Again, I'm very, very fortunate to have the opportunity to work on on this while I do that as well. I agree. While it's not an ideal situation, I feel like the healthcare sometimes is so messed up that it's the flexibility you need to work yeah. around that is rare for people. It's so true. Yeah. I I I worked full time for in two different jobs prior to starting the new happy. And um, as he got sicker and sicker, it just became impossible for me to manage because I needed to be on the phone with doctors and insurance companies and be available when he needed me. And that didn't work with working 70 hours, 60 hours a week and having other people need you at certain times. So um, it has been a massive benefit for my own mental health to be able to be more flexible in when I work and how I fit that in. What's something that you're most proud of? Honestly, I think I'm most proud of being there for Alex, my partner, in a time that has been really hard for him. I think I'm proudest that I'm there for him. His illness has been the hardest thing that I've ever gone through and that he has ever gone through. And I'm proud of my resilience and what I've learned and how I've tried to take things out of it to help people. I'm proud of our relationship and being there for one another in such a hard time. And that means more to me than any material accomplishment or subjective milestone ever will. Since you are working around happiness, I read something a while ago, which is kind of having your happy toolkit and Mm. recognizing that what things make you happy and keeping them in your toolkit for whenever you need. What are the top three things in your toolkit? Ooh, that's a great question. I love that idea too. I need my toolkit to, (laughs) to survive and to cope as well. The first thing in my toolkit is movement. I have found the most benefits from even just going for like a 10 minute walk or a 20 minute walk. We talk a lot about the mind body connection, but we only really talk about using the mind to help the body rather than the body to help the mind. Learning that for myself was was really, really helpful. The second thing in my happiness toolkit would be meditation. Five minutes of just sitting and breathing is so helpful for me to relax my nervous system from the stress of what I'm experiencing and the sadness and all that kind of stuff. And to become both more aware of my emotions and also allow myself to feel them instead of suppressing them or pretending they don't exist or just trying to smile through it or whatever. So giving myself that kind of quiet space to both reflect on what I'm thinking, but also on what I'm feeling. The third element I would say is probably journaling, writing down, and that really helps with the feeling of the feelings part. But the other thing about journaling for me is that it ends up being this creative exercise because a lot of what I end up journaling, I end up turning into art, things I'm learning about well-being and happiness because it all kind of ties back to that for me. And so a lot of my work actually comes from blending the personal reflections of what I'm going through and feeling and experiencing with what I know about the research and and melding those things together. If you were to pick one interesting life experience to share with us, what would you tell us? I think I would talk about my caregiving experience because it's been such a foundational element of my life over the last few years. And It has shaped me, I think, more than any other life experience I've ever had. I have learned so much from it and changed so much because of it. That is the one that's most present top of mind for me right now. And I also think that while my situation is unique, it's also universal because we all have loved ones and we are all going to experience them getting sick or us getting sick. And We don't provide any sort of support for people who are going through those experiences, even though it is actually a universal thing. We treat it as shameful and undesirable and like a distraction from the rest of your life when really I can't think of anything more human than being there for people in their times of great struggle, whether it's a physical illness, a mental challenge, whether it's just more of the normal pains and experiences that we go through in our lives. It's about showing up for other people. And so this situation has taught me so much about what that looks like and how to navigate through it. And so for me, that would be both 
I, w- I would hope, interesting and helpful for other people. Thank you for answering all my questions, Stephanie.